you too. Let's take a look at the Galaxy Z Flip 4 two months later together. Let me show you guys and share with you my brutally honest remarks and opinions about this device after two months of use. Now I gotta be fully transparent. We hit a huge bump in the road at the three week mark. But if you've been following the videos, you know, and if you haven't, I'll let you know in this video. So let's get into this, the design. This is literally a foldable smartphone. Bravo to innovation, shout out to Samsung. I appreciate the bravery to take this head on and be one of the first to do it. And with that being said, this thing from a design standpoint is extremely promising. As we saw with this Z Flip 4, the sales numbers for the foldables this year between these two, Z Fold 4 and Z Flip 4, were actually really high and Samsung is getting that awareness. They're breaking into the market with these devices. But here's the reality. Most people have reservations about a device that has glass that folds in half because there's the question, rightfully so, to durability. And this is where my bump in the road three weeks in comes into play. I had this device for only three weeks and I had screen failure. This is by far the most disappointing experience I've had with a foldable to date and it's extremely unfortunate because I've been rooting for these. As you can see, my device is working just fine now because at this point, Samsung has corrected the issue that I ran into three weeks in to my usage of this device. My biggest gripe and point of tension with this whole bump in the road is it was literally only three weeks of having this device, no malpractice. As you guys can see, this is the same device. If I give you guys an up close look at the hinge, at this device, now I added a, a skin to it since, but even if you look at my video from the repair, I'll show you guys up close, there was no ill will or malpractice done to this device. And if there was, Samsung wouldn't have covered it under warranty because they could have ruled it as user error. But here's my true point of concern. I'm seeing comments of people who around the same timing of one month, three weeks and so forth, who also had the exact same screen failure, which is kind of alarming. And then there's some people from previous generations who've had issues and even current generation to where Samsung refuses to repair, basically putting it on the user. I can't get behind that. Now, here's my thing. Woo, front facing camera on my brand new <laughs> fixed <laughs> Z Flip 4, yes. We go in there. You know, uh, I don't know. It was a rough patch for me in the terms of durability when it comes to this Z Flip 4. I had an incident happen three weeks in where my screen display failed on me. I guess it cracked. I'm not sure exactly what was the cause. And, you know, this is the year of the new hinge and, the, you know, the marketing of durability of the foldable. And, you know, I had an issue and... You know, a lot of people attack me. Oh, you know, you could be just an anomaly and so forth. But by me putting out the video, I got comments of other people having similar issues. And around the same time frame and so forth, some people didn't have an issue. Some people did. So it, it became like, oh, now I can see and find out. And so can people who watch the videos and watch the, uh, the issue video and then the update video, which gave total you know, redemption to Samsung and how they handled the situation. But nevertheless, I digress. No need to waste time on trolls. The focus is the fact that around durability on this device, my confidence in it has been shaken from a real life event. And also seeing the comments of other people having the same similar real life events. And I think it's getting to the point to where I'm pretty sure if you did a search on the internet, you might can find forums and more people that have been affected by this. So basically it leads me to question this. This year around this, Samsung cheap out on parts for the foldable? Or did they, you know, like, because my Z Flip 1 is still running like a champion till today. I got away from the Z Flip because it was inferior and, you know, cameras and so forth. And then Samsung turns around and gives it a little bit more, not enough, but a little bit more in the camera department and so forth. And then now here I am where um, yeah, I have to question the durability. And right now, while I'm using the front facing camera, it keeps going from widescreen to one sided and so forth. I'm not sure what that's about. And then, yeah, I don't know how I'm triggering 
this instead of keeping it full anyways nevertheless <laughs> i don't know like i am big on the foldable train but also i gotta be a realist and um just call it how i kind of see it like I, just, I i don't know i just think you guys need to go back to the drawing board on durability like you guys are almost there it's almost there it's almost like where it could be mainstream but i don't know if it's quite there yet i could be wrong uh, you know, you're going to have people, oh, I've never had an issue. Shout out to you. I was the same way up until, you know, this point and so forth. So, you know, I had an issue. Caused me to question. I see other people having issues. It's causing me to question more. And that's just where I stand. My question now is, is the hinge not the best design that Samsung could have brought to the forefront? Is this hinge lower quality than the previous hinges? Just a question, thoughts that crossed my mind while I was going through the experience because I said nothing but positive things about the durability to their foldable devices because my previous Gen 1 Z Flip has never had an issue. But the Z Flip 4 gave an issue three weeks in. So that is what I can share honestly about my experience around durability in this two months of me owning this Z Flip 4. So we're back. I got my device back and I've had this new display for about a month now using it and experiencing it. But I will admit, I don't experience the device the same in the sense that I'm not as just, you know, I'm not going to go crazy with the opening and slamming. I'm a little bit more careful now because I'm nervous. <laughs> so on a redemptive note to my bump in the road, Samsung did take care of it under warranty. But there's also the Samsung Care Plus, which is another extra warranty that they sell, which extends that one year, but it has a hefty price tag. No different than Apple Care and so forth. But I don't want to feel when purchasing a foldable device as if I have to make an extra expense for the insurance just to fill some peace of mind. And that's the one thing that I want to call Samsung to fix for us on the next generation. Now let's move on to some more positive notes. Let's get into this. OLED panel in here. It's a full HD 1080p OLED display, vibrant as ever, saturated as usual. That's Samsung display experience. The only difference with it is the aspect ratio. It's slimmer than usual and taller than usual. So some people like it, some people don't. I just want to note that out to you. If you're trying to get into this user experience and it's new, you're going to notice that it's slim and tall. For some people, texting gets a little weird because it's a little bit more crammed. And then there's the visual aspect, which I think for like web pages and timelines and scrolling things that go from top to bottom, generally, it's ideal. But truthfully and honestly, it could be wider and shorter, and I would appreciate it just as much. And honestly, more, just to be frank. I will say, however, I believe since this device is in that flagship territory, $1,000 is flagship pricing. We deserve a quad HD display on this device. Loving the 120 hertz, loving it as it is in full HD. As someone who uses the Galaxy Note, the S22 Ultra, I've always used top tier flagship devices. I want quad HD on my display. So quad HD display will take the Z Flip 4 experience to the next level. It's already a good tier device and i don't want samsung to position this phone as mid-tier when it's actually top tier so give it the top tier features is my opinion now let's talk platform the platform on this device is android 12 with a one ui overlay now currently the pixel 7 pro just released so android 13 is out in a while but you don't have it on the z flip 4 or z fold floor for that matter and the main reason is because the one UI overlay. So they have to, you know, do their processing and get it out to us. Hopefully we can even see it this year. But generally with devices like this, you won't see Android 13 or the next version until going into the next year, closer to the next model type of thing. So that's something to keep in mind and to be informed of when it comes to the Samsung devices is the security patches have been in a timely manner but the platform Android updates take a little bit more time than usual on other devices such as the Pixel and the iPhone. Just keep that in mind. This thing is using UFS 
3.1 storage, so it's super fast. Samsung makes this storage. It's a great storage, which leads to a super speedy and snappy performance. Add that to the RAM that's included, which is eight gigabytes, which is enough, but I would like to see 12 gigabytes of RAM. Reason being, I believe that the Z Flip 4 is flagship quality. So it needs flagship specs to accommodate that. So real quick, let me do a sound test on this device. So I'll say the speakers on here are pretty good. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Next up, let's talk battery. The battery sizing in this device is kind of on the small and slim side at 3,700 milliamp hours. I personally, considering this to be flagship material, would love to see 4,500 milliamp hours or at best 5,000 milliamp hours, which is the standard in the current flagship. And I think a way that they can accomplish that is by going wider, and maybe shorter. I will accept a wider Z Flip 4 and a slightly heavier Z Flip 4 in exchange for a better battery. Bigger battery, better battery life. We can do that on this device because the chip in this year's Z Flip 4 is the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which is offering a bit more in the area of efficiency. And efficiency is the area where Android struggles in comparison to competitors such as Apple as far as battery life and just overall efficiency. Because the more efficient your device runs, the better your battery life. Which is why battery life is 100,000% subjective to you, the user, especially in the Android platform, to your apps, the way that those apps are running, your notification, screen brightness, screen resolution, the way that you set up your Android device and the features that you turn on or off will determine your battery life and your battery experience. And I think you solved that Samsung by making this thing wider and giving us a 4,500 milliamp hour, but I would love to see 5,000. I know I'm pushing for boundaries, leaps and bounds, but I'm pushing for you guys and the user experience that we deserve on this Z Flip 4 device or five, shall we say, since we're talking about the future. So battery life on the Z Flip 4, depending on user, can be fair to good or not so great. I've seen it all in the comment section below. Matter of fact, hit the comment section below right now and let me know how your battery life experience has been on the Z Flip 4. Now the next category I wanna speak on, which is one of my favorite yet least favorite categories is cameras and I'll explain why. What I love most about the camera experience on the Z Flip 4 is this. I can fold it in half, I can use the rear facing cameras which are the better cameras these aren't the best ones. We'll talk about that later. And I can see myself and monitor myself on this display. So I'm able to use the camera like this. Like if I double click right now, hold on, pull up the camera. There we go. You guys can see, I can see myself, whether photo or video. And this is fire. And then you can double tap and get a full view. So if I turn it sideways, I get that landscape look. This right here, is clutch. The problem lies in the camera physical quality as well as the camera app processing. I can show you better by showing you. So let's head outside. <laughs> All right, let's talk about these Galaxy cameras. Now, this is the Samsung Z Flip 4, which I absolutely love and adore, especially for content like this, shooting myself. Like the fact that I got this little small square because it's folded right now. I don't have it out and expanded. I don't have to struggle with holding it. And I can see myself. Literally, I have a viewfinder on the best camera, which is the rear camera. But there's a gripe. And it may be more particular to me and people that are similar to me, but it's skin tones. The skin tones are never correct or right when it comes to these Galaxy camera apps. And I don't understand why Samsung won't accommodate that. There's a lot of viewers and users and uh, techies that look like me, they use your product, Samsung. So please be more inclusive in your camera app in the way that it handles skin tones. Please. Like, it's, it, this is literally like the one thing left that's really keeping me from using your devices. This device, which is so much more convenient than my iPhone, <laughs> for video content. 
There's also like the microphone when it comes to like using the front facing camera on the uh, Samsung devices. And I honestly might be covering the microphone because I have my hand up there holding it in a certain way. So if the microphone quality shifted in a certain way, it could have been my hand. But when using front facing cameras, I've noticed on the Samsung, uh, you know, Galaxy camera setup, it's always like far away feeling. But when you use this rear, camera that's when you get the best audio and so forth but i love i love the form factor of the z flip 4 and literally i'm holding a square so simply so easy and i can see myself the best i just for the life of me would love my skin tones to be represented in the samsung camera app it's up to you samsung i mean <sighs> boom here it is i can just record holding it like this like, isn't that clutch? The fact that, uh, what camera do you know comes in this type of package that you can just hold like this and get fire footage? I just need that footage to look better. Okay, so you guys just saw my honest opinions and my visual proof as to this camera and its performance. Here's my perspective. These cameras should have been just as good as the cameras if I point over there and you see that blue and orange phone right there, the S22 Ultra. I want S22 Ultra caliber cameras on the Z Flip 4. Same goes for the Z Fold 4. These deserve S22 Ultra caliber quality smartphone cameras. Because when it comes to Samsung cameras, it's lackluster for me. There's more to be desired and I think you fix that by giving me S22 Ultra caliber cameras on this device. Because the S22 Ultra camera array and s21 ultra were both by far the best and most favorable samsung cameras i've ever used but this is not the s22 ultra or s21 ultra so these are not my favorite samsung cameras that i've used it's my favorite user experience from a foldable being able to see myself in this display but these aren't the best cameras so my biggest critique improve the cameras physically and improve your Samsung camera app, Samsung. Jeez. This all now leads me to the most important category, which is user experience. User experience is what matters most. It's what we all care about. And it's what we all experience when we buy these expensive tech products. They are pricey. So my user experience is my most favorable thing about the Z Flip 4. I go from a large, tall smartphone with a beautiful OLED panel that should be Quad HD, I fold that down into a small, compact, easy to pocket smartphone device that's nice and light. I know I'm asking for it to get a bit heavier by asking for a bigger battery, but a bigger battery adds to the user experience. This front display could actually become the full display up here. It would be nice if this was bigger because as I said, I like to use this as my viewfinder when using the cameras and being able to interact with the front display more with notifications and so forth will just only add to the user experience. I like and enjoy this little thing. My enthusiasm was through the roof when I first got this device. It has since come down a bit due to my experience you know, we hit a quality bump on this device, but I'm still rooting for foldables. I'm still rooting for the Z Flip to become the Z Flip that I know that it could become, but it's going to take work and effort from Samsung. Now, I know Samsung, with their deal with Android, they're forced to create foldables year after year in order to get Android support. That's the cost of being the innovator, the person jumping out in front of everyone. Now, you don't have as many people left and right and in front and behind you to help support the cause. It's coming, but it's not quite here yet. And the same thing goes from an honest perspective when it comes to the foldable device. I see a lot of people saying in the comment section that the tech just isn't there yet. And I used to disagree, like reasonably, because I know the tech isn't fully robust and refined. But now I'm starting to agree more because at the end of the day, when it comes to foldables, the number one thing that needs to be emphasized is durability. Those features can be added to add to the user experience that I'm speaking on. But number one, Samsung needs to address foldable device durability. I, I apologize for 
giving that hard smack down, but I need you guys to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell. When you subscribe, if you don't hit the bell afterwards, it's not the same. You can actually miss this dope, fun, innovative, and brutally honest tech content. You wouldn't want to do that. Thank <laughs> you.